and we're back. This is the last week of June, and we're all actually back this time, so that's a bit of a thrill. Brian came back from Heroes Con. Did you get a new Heroes Con t-shirt? Not the official Heroes Con t-shirt. What about a print? You always, cause I like, do get the print, yeah. There's a Superman print. Let me tell you about Brian's bathroom. Brian has a pretty cool bathroom, because he has all the Heroes <laughs> Con posters hanging in his bathroom. And so it's a Superman. Is it John Romita? No, it wouldn't make sense. He wasn't there. Right. Who was it? Hughes? No. Hughes wasn't there either. Really? Who was it? Raphael Albuquerque. That's pretty sweet. Is it cool? <laughs> it's pretty cool. I think I'm going to give it to Gus, though. So if Gus watches this, he'll know before tomorrow. Ah. Uh, well, but if he, he doesn't if, watch it, he won't know. You know I, this thing doesn't, really, <laughs> doesn't go up online until like 11 o'clock at night. So if Gus yeah, is. 11 o'clock tonight, though. Oh. Well, if Gus is watches this at 11 o'clock tonight, then. Oh, wait, wait. Are you saying that you're going to give it to him on Thursday or Wednesday? Wednesday. Okay, I, I can't I can't keep straight <laughs> if we're trying to, like, add to the illusion that we're recording this on Wednesday, because we're not. It's obviously Tuesday. This isn't, yeah. isn't the Daily Show or something. Okay, <laughs> it's like, it's a secret surprise. <laughs> um, well, that's cool. Um, no, I've, I always, like, I always get kind of entranced when I uh, use your bathroom. <laughs> that sounds weird. Uh, just because I love those HeroCon posters. Also, I like that... It's like that Phil Noto, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but was Phil Noto that big of an artist at the time when they asked him to do that here? Mm -hmm. That was when he was kind of starting to be a big deal. Yeah. His is, his is not very good, though. Yeah, it's not, but it's still like, it's early uh, Phil yeah. Noto art. And there's the, of course, the, uh, and he's Mary Jane. Uh, mm -hmm. That was uh, the first one. Yeah. That one's still on the website, too, of Heroes Con. Yeah. I, I know, because I... I would constantly kind of update like once a day, like see if any other artists were there. I was like, oh, Jim Brigman's gonna be there. They only updated on Wednesdays and Fridays. Oh, uh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I was bored when I was when sure I was, when I was uh, in between my classes quite often. All right. It seems to be all the time. Yeah, it was. Um, so I guess we're ready to talk about comics. Mar, are you ready to talk about some independent comics, or are you knuckle deep in that Outcast? Yeah. Outcast is really good so far. It's kind of a... I think this is a double issue. Yeah, it feels yeah, pretty, it's, it's, yeah. it's pretty it's meaty. Big yeah. issues and there's no ads. The whole thing is a story. And it's, it's two ninety nine. That's another yeah. awesome yeah. thing. That is, that is bare bones comic book uh, right there. Robert Kirkman. I'm halfway through it right now and I'm already like loving every panel. Have you read this yet, Brian? Yeah, it was good. Yeah, I'm really intrigued to see where it's going to be going. Um, so far we've got some demons. We've got... A priest. We've got a troubled man who maybe, maybe not killed his kid. We don't know. Dirty houses, cockroaches. Ooh. Um, Interestingly, also apparently, it sold better than Walking Dead that that month. Oh snap! So, yeah. um, this is issue one of Outcast by Robert Kirkman. Jump on it. Walking right Dead's now. like the number two best-selling comic, right? Isn't it? It's up there. Yeah, it's up there with Batman. Yeah. So I'm gonna come back to that in a minute. Um, we also have issue two of Cowl, and I, I read like issue one. Huh? I liked issue one. A yeah, lot. Um, I'm really it's it's darker, um, but it kind of gives me a little bit of that Watchmen vibe, like the superheroes in real life um, takes place in Chicago. I think that's a cool aspect of it too. Yeah. Because um, Chicago's an interesting setting, especially when it comes to like real life crime and stuff that actually happened there. Mm-hmm. And this is on my to-read list. Um, this is the second issue of Trees by Warren Ellis. Uh, this, from what I've been hearing about it, alien trees infecting the planet. Finally, see what they're up to. Yeah, first issue was good. Yeah. Uh, so second issue of that. And the last issue, I believe this is the last issue. Yeah, this is yeah. the last issue of the miniseries. Yeah. Last issue of the Serenity miniseries. And the previews for this month has... Uh, the collection and hardcover. So they're going to keep doing, they're going to do more miniseries though? Yeah. That's pretty exciting. Yeah, a lot of good stuff coming out from the uh, independent publishers. Uh, I, I, when I was giving my presentation at uh, Hendrix uh, Governor's School last night, I was talking about the rise of uh, Image and how it was like really bur you know, burning high for a few years, like, you know, uh, uh, Spawn and, and uh, you know, like Savage, Savage Dragon, Dragon and, and, and those things. And then I talked about how it's kind of like seen a resurgence, especially like with, since the Walking Dead show came out. And like I, I, I was telling those you know students about because we were talking about like creator own like uh, 
like uh, profits that they make, like when it comes to major mm -hmm. corporations, like what they can do with their own independent ideas. And uh, yeah, like once it just like told me, it's like, why in the world would you work for DC and Marvel? And I was like, well, if you're starting out, it's actually a good deal, but like, yeah, it, it, it does. Well, keep in mind, this is a cycle right now. Mm -hmm. Five years ago, why would you work for Image? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, what, what podcast will we listen to? Oh, Hickman said he made fifteen hundred dollars off of nightly news. Right. <laughs> so it's like yeah, yeah fifteen hundred dollars an, an issue, issue, which right. is which is like yeah, you're, you're not horrible. Like it, it's awesome, like, no, but no, you got you got to have another job. It's like right. you, can't, you can't rely on that. He's making more than that on Avengers. <laughs> yeah, but so, yeah, exactly. But so like five uh, years from now, it'll be back the same like, line. Yeah, and, and I was trying. That's what I was trying to tell him. I was like, yeah, that's awesome, and that that's true, but. You have to remember that people are buying. Uh, and I, I had a graphic with like Walking Dead, Fatal, uh, Sex Criminals, and Saga on it, and I said all these comic writers are established. And if it wasn't for DC and Marvel, no one would know who they were. And for the most part, for the most part, wouldn't care to read those comics. Uh, Kirkman's actually not that. Kirkman's the exception. Uh, <laughs> right, but yeah, it, wasn't he working at Marvel doing like stuff like Ant Man, like small stuff, and then he did with Image, or was he doing that first? He did or not irredeemable. Uh, was the Invincible was, first. Okay. And I think Walking Dead came out while he was working on mm -hmm. Marvel. Walking Dead wasn't big. Uh, I mean, it no. was popular. Um, Mar yeah, Marvel was Comics was, more, was bigger than it yeah. was than Walking Dead. But it was, it was popular amongst comic book fans, but once again, that, that yeah. thing wasn't a roller coaster hit until the TV show. And then it just... Oh, it was already hit by the TV show, by the time the TV show, but it wasn't it like wasn't in the massive, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not yeah, the it second highest selling comic book exactly. or whatever. Yeah. yeah, no, the TV show definitely fueled them. Exactly. Well, and then if it wasn't for the TV show, we wouldn't have... I like to think it's because of the TV show that uh, that's why we have Saga. That's why we have a lot of these, because uh, it did attract people sure. to the image. Um, and like, to like get your comic advertised, like the you know, Walking Dead comic was right. a pretty good boon. Uh, but... Uh, it's one of those like crazy. That's the thing about economics. Can't really predict it a lot of times. Well, it's a cycle. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, like you said, 10 years of 15, 10 or 15 years ago, mm -hmm. image was huge, and then it kind of faded away. At, at, 10 or 15 years from now, I mean, it'll be, we'll be, you know, well, five it might be years Dark Horse, we'll, or it might be, you know, Marvel might, you know, be yeah. something better, and DC might be good. So pay attention now. Yeah. True. My, that's, that's one of the things they, because they constantly ask me, you know, like, are you, are you a DC fan or are you a Marvel fan? And I was like, that's not how you should approach comics. You should just be a fan of good comics and, and seek out what you're interested in, what you like. That's uh, true. And I was like, like, there's, even though there's very few DC comics that I enjoy, the ones that I like, I'm like, these are some of the best comics that I read. The one or two that I do read by DC. Speaking of those good comics, what's coming up from DC this week? Well, we do have two. <laughs> right on. <laughs> uh... First one is your Batman, number 32. Woo! I mean, I, do I even need to talk about this book no, anymore? I no, mean, it's, it's everyone's reading it, yeah. and it should be. It's well, what's happening up in the back? It looked like there was some kind of... I saw, like, a very 90s Tim Drake Robin, sorry. Yeah. What is this? No, this is still Michael Jan. I don't know, maybe we get into the present or something, because I did see... Oh, it's a Grayson preview. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, But okay. strangely... Oh, Michael Jan does... Uh, is he doing the art for Grayson? He's doing the art for Grayson. He did the art for something else this week, too, but I forgot what it was. I like Michael Shannon. It's not this... It's not... Oh, he did for Batman Eternal. He did the art for Batman okay. Eternal this week, which I don't know how to talk about. But, of course, that also came out because it's the weekly Batman yeah. book. And then the other one that we actually do need to talk about is Superman 32. This is Jeff Johns and John Romita Jr. John Romita Jr.'s first DC comic ever, except unless you want to count Batman Punisher. Which you know. <laughs> uh, so I've read it. It's pretty good. It's not amazing, but it, I mean, it's a Superman comic and it feels like a Superman comic, which is probably most importantly when you're talking about the New 52 stuff. And it looks, you know. Yeah, the art is really good. It's trying yeah, it's to be a trying to impress, I think. Like, he's, he's putting a lot of work into that. I'm not saying that he doesn't normally, but it looks really good. And aside from Unchained, I really haven't read Superman stuff, so you can see that John Ramid, or Jeff Johns is trying to fix the continuity again because mm -hmm. I guess Clark is not working at the at the Daily Planet now so part of the story is Perry's trying to get him to work for him again yeah I, I don't <laughs> Which know is I can't weird. I can't yeah. tell you I mean it's like Superman's not, never been like a, a character that I've really like 
dove into. I liked Unchained. Unchained's fine. Uh, yeah, although it's not even amazing. It's well, and, and that it's, it's hard again because I feel like every time an issue comes out, I need to back up and read sure. the past four because the comic's like what a, a year and a half old now, and there's only been like five issues. I think we're actually up to six or seven. I think we're pretty close to the end because yeah. nine is the last issue. But, but yeah, it's it's. it's it's, you have to be patient for that one. But yeah, like, I thought that was going to be an ongoing, and then they're like, nah, it's not. <laughs> Jim Lee's not going to be able to do it, and Snyder, he's burnt out on it, so, oh well. But, you know, I'm not burnt out on, I have to segue yeah, from I everyone. Totally, yeah, yeah, it's okay, I totally wasn't finished, but go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Go for it. <laughs> so basically, if you're, if you're halfway interested in Superman, this is a good place to start. Uh, if you're not interested in Superman, you probably just go ahead and let it go. What? Let me ask you this. What if I'm a fan of DCU Superman? Am I going to dig this? Like, what if I've, I've been so oh, turned that's off? That's what I'm saying. Yes, comment? he uh, feel, it's Superman. He okay. feels like Superman. Okay. He's not the jerk that he was in the Grand Morrison stuff. But I mean... Ignorant it's, kid, you know. Yeah, it's like Superman and Chain. Superman and Chain, he's Superman. Yeah. Well. yeah. So, cool. Yeah, this is definitely feels like the real Superman. Right on. I didn't know Quad's shit until it was a past shit, too. Yeah, cool. he works with John Mayer Jr. Usually. Okay, cool. Right on. Excellent. Um, well, awesome. Speaking of things that are awesome, <laughs> kind of force that segue in there. Um, we had some good Marvel comics, and a lot of good Marvel comics. Some that I'm, I can't wait to read, and some I'm just really curious about. And I'll start with this one. Uh, it is Savage Hulk. And Savage Hulk is, what's it called? Like, it's not an anthology series, but what is it where it's like, it, there's no real ties to continuity here. I always um, call it, it's like the Legion of the Legend of the Dark Knight book. Yeah. Because it's going to be just stories by the creator. Just like Savage Wolverine right now, where it's stories, doesn't matter. It could be in any time period. It can be. Yeah. It's just whatever the creators want to do. And yeah, if you're not a fan of, let's say, let's say if you're just a fan of the character or you're just interested in the character, this is like the perfect kind of comic for you where it's just like, you're not jumping in the middle of a story. You don't feel like an obligation to read on. You, maybe you haven't read for years and you just want to read a good Hulk story. I'm sure this is going to be it. And uh, Alan Davis, Mark Farmer, Matt Hollingsworth on colors. Uh, I, I'm sorry. Hollingsworth is the only name I recognize. I know. You don't know who... You've never heard of Alan Davis? Help me out. He created Excalibur. He created Captain Britain. <laughs> I mean, he's only only, only in this uh, community can you say you've never heard of Captain Britain, and like it's gonna be an insult. But, uh, all right, cool. Yeah, well, that's he's, awesome. He's a huge X Men artist. All right, sweet. So, and uh, uh, and it, it does have it is the Hulk versus the X Men. So it's it, the original X Men. So don't don't be sad when Wolverine's not cutting into Wolverine, into the Hulk. But it should be good. It's I mean, if you have any interest in Alan Davis, you certainly need to get it. If you have any interest in the Hulk, there's that too. Sure. Yep. But cool. Awesome. All right. Uh, Original Sins. Which this is the uh, series that follows along with Original Sin. So this is not Original Sin issue four. This is just kind of a standalone series where it talks about different characters in the Marvel Universe and what their Original Sin was or what was kind of going on uh, with them during these events. And some of these characters are big names and some of them are not and so we got Black Knight who uh, I don't even know what's been happening with Black Knight uh, recently in continuity uh, he was in he's in the MI-13 the uh, the British kind of Avengers team mm. that Pete Wisdom's got with Captain Britain yeah okay <laughs> I know you and Jack does that matter no because okay. he's not on my team <laughs> oh is he not really like really come on no. like Marvel only has like 20 maybe British characters mm. Union Jack's Union not Jack on the team. did not make the cut, dude. Jeez. Okay. Well, Black Knight, if you know his original sin, the Young Avengers, their story continues here, and also Howard the Duck, so... If there. you want to know what Howard the Duck's yeah. original sin is, exactly. there it is right there. Howard the Duck, he shows up once every five years <laughs> for two pages. Uh, all new Dupe, uh, issue three, continuing his uh, love story with Kitty Pride. Um... And what Doof was up to during Battle of the Atom, which uh, is a pretty cool idea. Oh, God. I <laughs> just I spoiled something for myself. It's a pretty uh, good uh, idea for a series. And, yeah, you know, it, it's a fun little story uh, about Doof, uh, which is, you know, the weirdo in the X-Men universe. No, it's good stuff, though. It's funny. 
All right, coming up is issue three of The Amazing Spider-Man. And remember that issue when Doc Ock, as Spider-Man, punched Black Cat in the face? Uh, <laughs> turned her over to the cops. Turned her over to the cops <laughs> when she tried to flirt with him. Yeah, it looks like Peter's going to have to deal with that. So that this might be hilarious. I, that was that was one of my favorite moments in comics last year because I didn't see that coming <laughs> at all. Like it was yeah, just, I remember the cover was all like they're all know, making out. Like, <laughs> uh, this is going to break the heart of many a cosplayer as she gets a new costume that totally uh, covers her boobs. Oh no. <clears throat> I kind of like it. Yeah. It's not it's bad, but it's certainly, I mean... It's a good costume. It's a different change. It yeah. makes sense. Sure. There is no boobs going on, though. It doesn't make sense that she's got fur. Oh, uh, no. Whatever. She's a cat, I mean... Yeah, okay. At least, you know, again, her boobs won't be flying out every time she jumps on around in a building or something. Well, there you go. All right, but still, it should be a lot of fun. Which if, uh, it's, it's Spider-Man written by Dan Slott, which has been nothing but fun. Uh, for the past couple of years, so it's good stuff. Miss Marvel, number five, six, five. Uh, following Kamala Khan uh, as she struggles to figure out her powers, and yeah. Uh, I can't wait for her to meet some of the other Marvel yeah, heroes. Yeah, that's why I am. And looking totally to. fangirl out. And you just, know who the first one is, right? It's got to be. It's got to be Carol. Nope. No. Who is it? Is it in this issue? I don't know if it's in, I've seen the previews. She's Wolverine? taking a selfie, selfie with Wolverine. Oh, so. yeah. I, <laughs> I figure that she's a cover. Well, like nah, this, the Spider-Man Black Cat. The solicitation says that he's in it, so. Yeah, so. That's pretty cool. Sure, Wolverine's awesome. Yeah, and almost dead. Which sure. I'm not going to talk about that issue. <laughs> I, I don't care. Uh, but no, Miss Marvel has been a good series so far. And uh, yeah, I uh, this is one that I really kind of wish was bi-monthly. Uh, just because Marvel Marvel has spoiled me so much lately that like there's so many comics that I it's hard to keep up with because they come out like all the time like feels like every other week, uh, well literally every other week we get like a Spider-Man comic or like Guardians of the Galaxy, um, and like Miss Marvel like I go a month and I kind of forget about it and then when it comes out I'm like oh yeah let me read the past I don't few think pages. you know what the word bi monthly means. Mm -hmm. Bi-weekly. Bi-weekly is what you want. Yeah. Bi-monthly is every, every two months. Once every two months. That's Superman and Chain. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Two that's, months, come on. That's, that's generous. <laughs> um, that's Hawkeye, maybe. I think that's more generous. Yeah. Um, Tri-monthly. Tri-monthly. Uh, but <laughs> so no, I... At the I, Sex Criminals panel, somebody asked Matt about Hawkeye, and he just said, F you. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Uh, but no, it's a, uh, it's, it, this is a fun comic, and yeah, she's about to beat up some, uh, street hooligans, uh, I can't remember what the bad kid's name was, but he has, like, his, like, gang of hipsters, and she's about to take them out, and then finally, Guardians of the Galaxy, speaking of covers that don't really, uh, uh, Mario thought that the Wolverine, uh, selfie cover, that ju might just be a cover. Remember last month? Are we talking month's... about this again? We've already talked about this I once just... in the podcast. I know, I know. You don't like that cover? I like this cover fine. Last, last... Uh, that totally happens too, except he's not wearing that costume. Last That's issue though, sick. last issue mm -hmm. though, uh, Captain Marvel was on the cover, and she didn't even show up in the comic. Well, She's on it... two or three pages, and we already talked about how Bendis <laughs> took her I know, out I know, I know. He wanted to be like Empire Strikes Back, dude. I know. You know you love Empire Strikes Back. Your wife that's, watches it every day. And, really. I, and I love Guardians <laughs> of the Galaxy, so that's why I really honestly don't care. Uh, why do you keep bringing it up then? I just think it's funny. <laughs> there are thousands... I would be. I would bet you $10 that Duke does not wear a ninja costume in this comic book. <laughs> this does not happen at all. The dude does not get a bloody face. I mean, <laughs> most, I comic, most comic book covers do not... Uh, happen in the in the comic. Well, I can promise you this. Mm -hmm. I bet that scene. Where Moses I, does not show up <laughs> in that in that Bible comic. I bet this shot does not happen. I know, I know, but <laughs> usually though, Duke will show up in the comic. Right, but not as a ninja. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> not what I'm arguing. Talk about this the guy. Movie. Does this guy show up in the comic? He's, He's in the comic. I bet sure. so. So usually the character that's advertised on the cover, Superman, Superman probably... Superman does change into his costume. Okay, alright. Well, at least that's good. I'm excited about Guardians of the Galaxy. Let's get into picks of the week. Mara, what is your pick of the week? It's 
saga? Is that happening there? No, that does not happen in the comic. <laughs> but the characters are in this comic. Mm -hmm. uh, they are in it, yes. In issue 19, we saw some marital strife between Marco and Alana. And uh, we get a little bit more of that. We figure out what Prince Robot's been doing. Um, <laughs> who he's been doing. Uh, it's yeah. How he wants to do more. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely still one of my favorite series. That was one comic yesterday that the kids were like, hey, have you been reading Saga? They asked and, about yeah, Saga? Yeah, and I was like, and when I started talking about myself with the image stuff, I was like, I cannot recommend Saga to you because you were all teenagers, but Saga is really good. I did, I did like earlier though when you were talking about it, you were like, oh, I was talking about all these new comics and you had sex criminals up too? Yeah, I know. I, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't resist. I was like, I was like, well, they can't say that I, like, promoted it, but, you know, if your kid reads that, then that's... Did you explain what grimping was to them? No, I did not, <laughs> because I didn't want to get arrested. Um, but no, uh, turns out people are reading Saga uh, that you wouldn't expect to be reading Saga, and which is good. good. That's awesome. Excellent. What is your pick of the week? My pick of the week, surprisingly, is Uncanny Avengers. Surprising, because... Up until about a month ago, I was not enjoying Rick Remender's work on this or on Candy X Force. And then Mojo showed up. No, Mojo hasn't been in. He was in the annual, annual. but I, I didn't reread the annual. So, I'm done now. Oh, you just interrupted me, yeah. so Aww. I'm just not even going to talk about what I was going to talk about. Read Uncanny Avengers. What's in you it? You don't know why. What's in it? <laughs> Come on. So, I read the X Force omnibus a while ago, and then this weekend, on the way back from Heroes Con, I read all of the Uncanny Avengers. And you know that series, Axis, that's coming out? Everything in it, <laughs> crazily, the Apocalypse Twins are trying to stop. So when the Avengers defeat the Apocalypse Twins, <laughs> they're going to have to fight the Red Onslaught, which is the Red Skull with the power of Professor X and Onslaught. I, so I, I, these don't read incredibly well monthly. I, like, I actually don't think they read well at all monthly. But when you sit down and read them all, it's like this huge, complex story that's actually really good. Did you ever think Onslaught would come back? Like, yeah. Okay. I mean, I was, when Rob Liefeld did an Onslaught miniseries like five years ago. Yeah. It was Jeff Loeb and on and Rob Liefeld. It was awful. <laughs> like, I, I just, Onslaught's one of those like characters or one of those things like in comic book history that like, it's like all universal. Everyone's kind of like, you know, Onslaught's not that good. Onslaught's yeah. not that interesting. But I guess when you combine with Red Skull, it kind of works. Yeah, but... Everything that they're talking about, what happened, they're coming back to try and stop the storyline where the Red Skull shows everybody, he's got evidence that Wolverine killed his son and that they killed the kid Apocalypse and all this horrible stuff that they did in Rick Remender's run. Mm -hmm. And so the, the humans go crazy and they're going to kill all the mutants. And, and then uh, Red Skull takes advantage of all that chaos to take over the world. Wow. And so that theoretically is going to be what X Axis is or Axis, whatever that series When does that come out? It's in the last preview, so it'll start in probably the end of the summer. Okay. Well, um, what's up with the classic Iron Man? What's going on there? That's not the classic Iron Man. That's Iron Man 2020. Oh, okay. Sorry. Fool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. But, yeah, so right now what they're doing is they're trying... They've every The store's gone crazy, and they, the only way to fix it is go back in time. And so they're going to days of future past themselves and go back and change it. Well, right on. That's <laughs> what the X-Men do best. It's not the X-Men, it's the Avengers, dude. It's what the un Wolverine mutants. Wolverine are in it, but so is Captain America and Thor, dude. Come on. All right. There's a Unity team, dude. Is Rogue... Uh, Rogue's dead. Rogue so. is dead? Yeah. Who else is dead? Isn't... Rogue, Cap, Scarlet Witch, Wonder Man. But they're going to go back Cap, and change Cap is dead? Yep. Okay. Wolverine's going to die soon, too. But not in this story. Okay. <laughs> He's still so, alive in this so story. Okay. Is Rogue dead in the other comics? I guess she hasn't showed up again in yeah, uh, X-Men. Was, was that ever kind of explained in the Brian Wood X-Men comic? Like, did yeah. they ever bring out that Rogue is dead? No, she's just off having an adventure with the Avengers. Oh, uh, okay. That's <laughs> <laughs> okay. what I you do when you're an Avenger, dude. You I guess. Adventures. And you die sometimes. True. Okay. Cool. Like I right. said, so they're about to go back in time and fix it. They'll so. fix it. All right, well, that's good. Because uh, you can get away with killing Rogue and maybe Scarlet Witch, but you can't kill Captain America and not bring him back. <laughs> well, speaking of people dying, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think anyone dies in this comic. 
Uh, you got Fantastic Four. All right, sorry, you done. Yeah, I'm done too. Okay. <laughs> uh, Fantastic Four number six, which not surprisingly is my pick of the week because it's Fantastic Four, and like I've said, I'm probably gonna recommend Fantastic Four until I am just not liking this comic anymore. But there's no sign of that happening anytime soon. Uh, <laughs> Marvel cancels it like everybody said. Yeah, yeah. If that <laughs> happens, then man, I am. I'm gonna be crazy bummed out. Uh, there's a lot of artists attached to this one. Uh, Haspel and uh, Leonard Kirk, and uh, I don't know if uh, I don't know if uh, no, nah, okay, Carl Kiesel is doing ink. So, um, but no, it's a it's a good storyline. This is after the their trial that happened, so we're gonna see some fallout of that. This is a tie-in also to Original Sin, so I'm sure we're going to. Find out that someone had an original sin. I'm sure that's why Ben is about to punch Johnny, who is fired up in this uh, picture. But as we all know from reading this comic, he is no longer able to fire up. I'm sure that will get fixed. Uh, I don't know. I'm just excited. And Dean Haspel uh, is doing some art, and there was a really nice article about how Dean Haspel has always wanted to do art for a Fantastic Four book. He finally got his chance, and how he considered it one of the, you know, most exciting moments of his career. Blah blah blah. That's all cool. Um, so should enjoy it. If you like Dean Haspel's art, which I kind of do, it has like a retro vibe to it. A lot to be excited about in this comic. That's why it's my pick of the week. Exciting. I'm very excited about that one. I'm very excited about all these comics we talked about, with the exception of a few of the comics that we talked about. Uh, <laughs> um, well, Brian, well, Mar, is there anything else we need to talk about? All right. Well, Brian, can you tell us where we are located? We're at Conway Comics, uh, 255 Ferris Road, right behind good old UCA. That's right, the good old UCA, guys. And once again, remember uh, to come up here and buy some comics. <laughs> um, <laughs> once again, let me remind you oh, that I don't remember what I'm talking about. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, from nerdsfan.com, I'm Matt Wood. I'm Mara Wood. And I'm Brian Keown. And we will see you next week. You don't want to do the boop? Oh, boop, 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 boop. <laughs> All right.